me because I'm definitely into instant gratification. <laughs> well, it seems and, to be working well for you. Yeah, and, and the reason is is because I know how to make money. I, I don't, you know, I, I train myself to do that. So anything I want, I can go make the money. And my rich dad trained me to do that when I was nine years old, just playing Monopoly. Nearly 50 years ago, we would sit down and play Monopoly by the hour, you know. And I think, why are you doing this? This is because the formula for great wealth is found on this game board. And we all know the formula. Four red houses, one red hotel. And that was it. And I went, is that what you do? Because that's all you have to do to be rich. I went, I can do that. And the reason I'm a rich man today is because of that silly little game my rich dad played with me. Now, the cash flow game is a little bit more sophisticated one step up because my rich dad did teach me more than just Monopoly. On the other side of it, I would go home to my school teacher dad and I'd say, let's play, let's play Monopoly. And he'd say, put that stupid game away and do your homework. <laughs> so there was two different points of view on it, you know. Now, I provided a link over to your website in the email that I sent out to our listeners, but let's give them to them again. So it's www.richdad.com. Right. And also uh, richkidsmartkid.com. Right. The Rich Kid Smart Kid is the one that provides the curriculum and the games for people, especially homeschoolers. So, and they can order books either through Amazon.com or through richdad.com. That's correct. Well, that's excellent. Well, Robert, let's open up the call and take some live questions. Okay. So, callers, um, uh, we have so many hundreds of people on the line. Uh, noise control is important, so please uh, mute out your phone. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to push is to use the mute button on your phone, or if you don't have a mute button, push star six. That will mute out your phone, and then press star six to come out, ask your question, and then star six to go back out. So we'll just go back and forth here. And, Robert, the way this will work, too, to help everybody hear them is um, we'll go in, we'll hear the question, and then we'll go back into this quiet mode. I'll repeat the question, and then we can hear your answer. Okay. Okay, here we go. Question. Thank you. We can hear you. First question. Um, I currently have a 401K plan, and I is there any advice that he can give me as far as where to direct that to now instead of mutual funds? Thank you. Let, let me repeat that, Robert. She I has a 401k question. plan, and she was wondering if you have any ad advice as to where she can redirect that. Yeah, my answer to that is, I would, before you do anything, I would really, you know, invest in your financial education because um, just moving it out is not any safer. 401ks are are excellent for employees and for people who know nothing about money. They try to make it as simple as possible, people who are brain dead. So unless you have some degree of sophistication, I would stay in the 401k. I know I sound like John Kerry speaking on both sides of my mouth, but I just point out to you why I don't have a 401k plan. Number one, earned income. Number two, lousy investment. But if you don't have the sophistication or the skills, then stay in it until you get the sophistication and skills, until you know what to do with your money. See, my problem is is that the, the financial industry has has trained people to think that they're not smart and you need an expert to handle your money. That is completely inaccurate. Yet, if you're going to move your money, you need to be an expert at something. So my wife, her expertise is real estate. You know, she started with little dinky houses, and now she does multi-million dollar projects. But a person needs to find out what you're interested in and get some basic information before you move out of what was designed as a product that is better than nothing. And that's what I recommend first. Thank you. Let's take another question. question. Okay, question. excuse me. Next question, please. Yes, um, my question is, uh, in creating passive income... Where's the one that was open? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> Be sure to mute your phone, please. Star 6 to mute your phone. Thank you. There's a mom talking to her children. I know you probably think that you're in mute mode and it's hard to tell, so go to Star 6. There we go. Would you ask your question again, sir? Yes. Uh, in creating passive income... I'm curious as to whether you would focus on uh, on one particular item, say real estate, or would you focus on multiple items like real estate and uh, maybe a networking business also? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I believe in focusing on one thing, and I only I only do one thing. And what FOCUS stands for, the acronym, you might want to write this down, 
I got this from a winner's camp in Hawaii is where they teach children, young, young people life skills. And they, they focus on focus. And focus to them stands for follow one course until successful. And I, I strongly recommend that because when I started in real estate, I made mistakes for years until one day, it's like riding a bicycle, then one day I knew it. I could do it. I wasn't that good at it yet, but I knew I could do it. It's, it's like riding a bicycle. You know, one day I, I'm falling down, the next day I can ride. And so that's why I recommend focusing. And after I learned real estate, then I focused on net, not a network marketing business, but then I focused on becoming an entrepreneur. And that was in the 70s when I started the nylon and Velcro surfer wallet business that made me a multimillionaire for about six months, and then the business crashed. And as I said, you know, I learned from the mistakes. I learned more from bailing myself out of that crash, even though I lost my real estate investment. But I learned more from those mistakes, and I became a better entrepreneur and an investor. So focus. Choose one thing and do it until successful. So you believe in multiple streams of income, but no. setting up one at a time. Yeah, just I don't believe in diversification. That's the worst thing you can do. I believe in focus. Excellent. I focus really intensely. And I don't like buying a lot of things. I just buy one good investment. If it's not good, I shoot it. Buy something else. So uh, it's focus. Follow one co- course until successful. Thank you. Let's a lot take of people another... do is they quit before they become successful. Thank you. Let's take another question, Robert. Yeah. Another question. Hi, I have a question. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I, I have an eight-year-old child, and he's very creative with his mind as far as wanting to get into his own business and uh, <laughs> selling products or candies and whatnot. Yeah. He says hello. And um, I wanted to know, though, how can he create passive income as opposed to, you know, because you said passive income is like if you stop doing what you're doing, you're still creating um, income. But selling, to me doesn't create um, passive income. So what is it that he can do? Robert, let me repeat, I, I, he, Robert, let me repeat that question. It's such an excellent one. I don't think our um, call, you could hear it, but I don't think some of our callers oh, okay. could. Uh, she has a son who's really good at selling things, and he has a candy business, and she wants to raise him uh, to help him create a business rather than just being self-employed. So what is, what is your response to that? Any ideas for her? Well, first of all, keep encouraging the young person because when he goes to school, it'll be discouraged. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, it doesn't really make a difference. It's a progressive thing. So the most important thing that child is learning is how to sell. If you can sell, you're financially free. It's the most important skill. Then from there, he or she needs to leverage. And my friend has an 11-year-old son who started the same way. He started about seven. He started selling candy. And he realized he was working hard but going nowhere. So then he negotiated with his dad at age 11 to buy a gumball machine. And so today, this young young child, 11 years old, has I think five or seven hundred gumball machines spread out throughout through his town in Australia, and the young guy is making fourteen thousand dollars a month. In other words, he's making nearly three times more than the school teachers are, and he understands now passive income just from his gumball machines. The hard thing, though, is keeping the kid in school. Any other specific advice for parents who want to help their children create businesses? No, just let them do that. They, they, they need to learn how to sell first. You'd be surprised that if you cannot sell your, your life, you're trapped. You know, sales is the most important skill. That's why I support network marketing businesses because a network marketing business will train you to overcome your fear, your doubt, and your poor communication skills to learn how to sell. That's great for adults. But a child wanting to sell, please encourage them. I don't care if they sell comic books or, you know, seeds, you know, tomato seeds door to door, they're learning how to communicate well. And I wouldn't worry too much about the money. What's most important are the skills. Thank you. Let's take another question. Thank you, Carla. That was an excellent question. Next question, please. I have a question. Uh, is it really that we are in a housing bubble? I'm sorry. Could you say that again? Um, is it really that we're in a housing bubble at the moment? But her question is, is it true that we are in a housing bubble right now? Uh, Yes, we are. It's the biggest financial bubble in the history of the world. It's the biggest. And it's not a housing bubble. It's a currency bubble. And the reason it's a currency bubble is because the federal government, as well as the Japanese government and the Chinese government, have printed so much money that 
people as money flooded the market, starting with Y2K and the money flooded into the market, it kept dropping the rates 